Let's now take a look at how to use ggplot to plot time series. Obviously, time series data is something that we come across quite often, and so we want to learn how to use ggplot to plot them. Time series are connected intimately with dates. So first, we have to understand dates. Now, there is an inbuilt data frame in ggplot called economics. So the economics data frame, that has a column called date. Okay, and if you if you execute this command class economics dollar date, which is to find out what kind of object is economics dollar date, the system tells you that it's a date object. Okay, so it's not a number, it's a date object. So let's understand a little bit about dates in R before we go on to look at time series within R. Okay, so dates are different from strings, and date objects, for example. You want to get today's date, you can do sys.date, of course, S and D capital. It's a function, and the system will print out today's date. Right? So many times you want to do computations on today's date. So for example, you've got somebody's date of birth, and you want to find out how old they are. So you can do sys.date to get today's date, and then you can do the computation to get how old they are. So in order to create date objects, Typically, we will have the dates expressed in the form of strings. So we'll have to convert strings into the corresponding date objects. That's exactly what we are showing here. The workhorse function to do that is this function called as.date with uppercase D. Okay. So suppose you have a string containing a 1 slash 1 slash 80. It's a string, as you can see, because the values uh, surrounded by double quotes. Right? So the as.date function, you give the string, and then you tell it how to interpret the various components of the string. For example, this might mean month, or this might mean day, right? depending on whether you're British, or uh, people who follow the British Convention, or whether you're following the American Convention. Okay, So that's what it is. So here we are telling the system, treat the first thing as the month, the second thing as the day, and the third thing as the year. Right? So if you do that, what it will return is a date object, and this will be uh, January 1, 1980. That's what you'll get, 0, 1. Uh, th and this is a standard format in R for how it displays dates, year, month, day, with dashes in between. That's how it shows the dates. That's not how we gave the system the date, but that is how it internally shows any date object. Note also, incidentally, that we used slash in the format. That's because our original string contains slashes. If the original string had contained something else, we could put those particular characters here, and the system will convert it appropriately. That's the beauty of this as.date function with a format string. Okay. Now, when you just do as.date, the system treats uh, the things like this. right? So uh, it automatically takes care of the formatting. You don't need to provide a format string if your input data is formatted with uh, you know year, month, day. Okay, it just takes care of it. But most of the time, just to be safe, we'll give a format string anyway. Okay. Now, interestingly, if you take a look at this date as dot date seventy one one. Okay, that is you're converting not nineteen seventy but seventy one one. Then the system treats it as AD 70, not AD 1970. Okay, so that's a small problem there, right? So uh, when you're doing this default, you better be sure to give all the four digits of the year, right? So you could do it this way. You could do as dot date one dash one dash 70, and then MDY with a dash. So the, I'm just illustrating that whatever you put as the separator in the format string, that's what should be there in your original string. Okay, now the beauty is we stored the result of this date, which is January 1, 1970. We stored the result in a variable called dt. You can convert a date to a number, and interestingly, when you convert as dot numeric dt to a number, you get the value zero. Okay, that is because R stores the dates internally, the years, as the number of years from 1970. Okay, that is how it stores the year component of a date. Number of years since 1970. Therefore, the year for 1970 is 0. Okay. Now, does that mean that we cannot represent 
years before 1970? Not at all. Okay, so we can see an example. Uh, if you did numeric as dot date 711, remember you saw this that this converts to AD 1970, uh, AD 70, not 1970, and that shows it as a negative number. Of course, that is uh, the year AD 70 is that many days before January 70. So that's fine. Okay, so it can represent any year. It's just a convention that they have chosen the year 1970 as zero. Anything before that will be negative. Anything after that will be positive. Now you might get data sets with very different kinds of date formattings. There are many options for us to convert. So these are all the different options. So if you put a person D, then that means the day, the day of the month is represented as a number. This is the option we used in all the examples on the previous slide. But sometimes you may have uh, the month also represented as a number, which is what we used in the previous slide. Again, it's percent M. Now, sometimes month may be an abbreviated three letter representation of the month, like Jan, Feb, etc. Right? If that is the case, then you use percent B to tell the system that's what the input string contains. Right? Now, suppose the month names are complete, like January, February, etc., then you use an uppercase B, percent B with an uppercase. If the year is two digits, then you use percent Y. If the year has got all the four digits, then you use percent Y in uppercase. Okay, so these are all the, for day, really, there's no choice. You always express day as numbers, but with months and years, we've got the options, and within the format string, we can use these various options to convert dates properly. Okay, now, date objects are different from numbers. Okay, although I said that the year is stored as, an, as a number, number of years from 1970, that's okay, but that's not the entire date. Okay, now, R understands date objects very well, and we can also do date arithmetic. Okay, so here we are creating a date of 1 1 2001, which is January 1 2001. And we are creating, we are just putting the expression DT plus 100. Now remember, DT is not a number, DT is a date object. Okay, and we say 100, and it calculates 100 days from the given date. So you get, it tells you what is the date 100 days after that given date or 31 days after the given date. Okay, so you get 1st February, of course. Okay, here we've got two dates, uh, January 1, 2001, February 1, 2001, and then you can do DT1 minus DT1. So it understands subtraction, of course, it is zero days, because both DT1 minus DT1 is zero days. If you do DT2 minus DT1, that's a time difference of 31 days. And this is a time difference of minus 31 days, dt1 minus dt2, because 1 is before 2. Okay, and you can also compare dates, dt2 greater than dt1, it's going to say true. And dt1, uh, dt2 equals, is it equal to dt1? No, false, right? So all of these operations are possible. Now here, you can also do other things. So we are doing, again, two dates, d, uh, 80, you know, uh, January 1, 1980 and January 1, 1982. And here we are doing sequence D1, D2 by month. Okay, remember this, we, we use the seek function to calculate regular sequences. R can do regular sequences even within dates. So we are saying go from D1 to D2 and generate all the dates which are one month apart. Okay, so it generates the appropriate dates. And notice interestingly that it understands uh, that February has fewer days. Right? It understands that uh, some months have 30 days, some months have 30, 31 days, some months have 28 days or 29 days. It understands all of that. So notice that all of the day components are all 0, 1. So that is interesting as well. It's got that intelligence to perform these operations. Okay. So here we are doing uh, three dates and go from D1 to D3, but this time go by day. Last time we said go by month. Okay, so we are going from uh, January 1 to January 5 of 1980, and then you get the appropriate days. And here, we are going by two months. Okay, it's even intelligent enough to do that. So now we are jumping 1st January to 1st uh, March, etc. So there's a lot of intelligence built into data, data arithmetic. 
here we are going by four months and we are saying give me uh, start from D1 generate uh, dates four months apart and for an output length of four dates okay this is all parallel it's mimicking whatever we learned with doing seek on numbers the same thing is being mimicked on dates okay so four months three weeks and what we are doing here is creating a sequence and getting the second element of that sequence remember seek generates a vector so this seek is going to generate a vector of dates and we are now saying get me the second element of that vector okay so first element is d1 second element is three weeks from d1 okay so this is first january that is uh, 22nd january that's three weeks down from there okay we are getting only the second element that's why we are seeing only one element although of course we only generated two elements so now let's take a look at the economics data frame so I just did question mark economics I got you know you can do that and see the display but if I print out the economics data frame this is what it looks like and I'm just explaining the different columns in that data frame unemployed is basically the number of unemployed people this is the median duration of unemployment that's the personal consumption expenditure I don't know why they've called it uh, by such a convoluted name okay so this is the number of people unemployed this is the median duration of unemployment as of that de that date and this is the personal consumption expenditure and this is the population as of that point and personal consumption expenditure oh okay there's a mistake here this is personal consumption expenditure this is uh, I, sh I need to look at it so no wonder th this looked odd okay this is not personal con consumption expenditure it is some other column that uh, when you look at uh, question mark economics you'll see what exactly this is I'll fix the slide later okay so we can do some line plots here so we do class economics dollar date we already know that it's a date so unemp mead is the median number of weeks unemployed unemploy is the number of people unemployed so we are going to plot both of those lines so we are saying ggplot economics put the map the date to the uh, x-axis to date and uh, unemployed median to the y-axis and in the second plot x-axis is again date but this is the proportion of unemployment right because we are not interested only in the absolute unemployment numbers but in the proportion of population that is unemployed that is the unemployment rate this is the median length of unemployment this is the unemployment rate in the population the idea of course is we want to see if there is any connection is it that if the uh, percentage of population unemployed is high does it mean that the median number of weeks unemployed is also high that would stand to reason right because there are more people seeking jobs so it's going to take longer for them to find jobs okay and we are using geom line the interesting thing to note here is that you can put date on the x-axis for a line plot okay just like you could put a numeric value so it because it can it knows how to do date arithmetic you can put date on the on the x-axis no problem okay so now what we are doing is we have plotted those two graphs which is the median unemployment and the unemployment rate and we are putting those two side by side with grid dot range okay and I've put them one on top of the other that's how they came out if you want to force that we could have also said grid dot arrange a comma b comma n call equals one now this graph it makes sense to put it one on top of the other right because the the x-axis is common to both of them the date basically so you want to see how this works and of course interestingly as expected you can see that whenever there is a peak in um, in unemployment rate you also see that the median number of days that they have to wait for jobs also tracks the unemployment rate okay so that the pattern is to be expected but it may not track it exactly so for example you see this peak is higher that peak is a little shallower and so on okay so that that's the kind of stuff you will do with uh, with time series here we are doing a scatter plot okay and the scatter plot looks like looks like this okay and we do see of course a kind of linear relationship with when the unemployment rate goes up the median level of unemployment also goes up but it's not such a perfect straight line because there are so many other characteristics that affect the 
uh, median uh, time people have to wait to get a job okay so this is not the only determinant there are many other determinants so this is not a straight line as we would expect it but there is a correlation and that is also to be expected okay but one other thing that we could do is it would be nice to see the time evaluation of this time evolution of this right because the points here do not actually represent time notice that time is not either on the x-axis or on the y-axis right so for example this point may have occurred in 1970 whereas this point may have occurred uh, in 2000 for example right because there is no mention of time at all in these points because the x and y axis are just these so again when you're doing time series analysis you may want to look at uh, you may want to add time onto other plots which are not basically about time okay so when you do that what you find is this which is not very good so we are doing a geom path right because we want to put time and incidentally the order in which the data occurs if you think back to our original data set itself notice that the data is occurring in date order right seven one eight one nine one ten one sixty seven and it goes on so because of that if you do a path path if you remember will uh, take the plot the line based on the order in which the data occurs right so if you did a geom path you will see the line that the, in which the da data evolved so you're seeing that uh, you know basically the line is going uh, like this right so maybe it started somewhere here went here came here came here that's the way in which it has meandered uh, and again from this plot it's not very clear how the time actually evolved so let's try to make that also a little bit clear okay we already know the geom path connects the points by their order of appearance and therefore by doing a geom path we are trying to add on time on top of top of a plot which is basically not by time Okay, we are trying to get the time dimension onto a plot and that's what we are trying to do but it didn't work too well okay it's hard to see how the relationship has evolved over time however if we are able to color the points by time okay then you will get an idea of how the unemployment uh, population how this ratio uh, the how the plot evolved okay so clearly these points are all in the earlier years and these points are in the later years right so uh, clearly this is probably the last point I suppose in 2010 that's where it stood okay so you can see uh, that it's sort of gone through all kinds of convolutions around here and I don't know where it's somewhere here it jumped over to that trajectory and then went like that and, and came and stood here okay so this is also a kind of a time series plot although it's not explicitly a time series in that the x-axis is not time that's what you're seeing here and you generated this by saying uh, x-axis is unemployment by population y-axis is the median level of unemployment and the color is based on the year of the date variable because date is is a complete date with year month and day but we want to color it only based on year okay just to get a clearer picture so we use the function year on the date object to get only the year okay so so that's what's going on there as we've already seen geom path connects the points by their order of appearance in the data set and we already know that our economics data set is strictly ordered by time okay and therefore path really does the job that we want it to do okay now many times what happens is that we get CSV files with date information okay so the way R works is you know that when you read anything that is not numeric it that is it if you're reading string data from a CSV file R automatically converts it into a factor right so this date in it would have been let's say a CSV file and it would have been represented like this okay when you read it by doing GP is read.csv gas price series.csv. This is just an imaginary data set that I just made up. Gas price series.csv. You read it, and then you know th this might have been in the CSV file. And if you look at the column called GP dollar date, and you see that it's actually a factor because by default R reads all strings as factors, it reads the strings in as factors. 
Okay, and that's not what we want because we want it to read the string as a string so that we can convert it into a date. If it's a factor, R won't be able to convert it into a date. Okay, so really when we read the data containing date information, we should read it like shown here. Read.csv, gas price series.csv, comma, strings as factors equals false. That is, we are telling the system, look, don't convert strings automatically to factors. If it comes as a string, just keep it as a string. I'll take care of what is to be done there. You don't convert it. That's what we are doing here. Right? So once you do this, the date column will come in initially as just a string. But of course, we've already seen techniques for converting the strings into date objects. And that's what we are doing here. We are creating a new column called date underscore converted, gp dollar date underscore converted. That's a new column we are creating. And we are using the function as dot date. We know this function. So we say gp dollar date. And then the format string this time is going to be, we know that this is a month, percent %m. We know that slash is the separation character, so slash. We know that this is the date, day, and so percent %d, fine. But the year is in four-digit format, so we use uppercase Y, percent Y. Okay, so now if we go and look at class of GP dollar date converted, which is the new column we created, it says you've got dates there. Now this is ready to go for any time series plotting that we may want to do. Okay, so before we can plot time series, if we are getting the data from outside, we have to make sure that the dates are actually stored as date objects and not just as strings. If they were simply stored as strings, then we would not be used, uh, able to use it on the x-axis as if it's a date. That's the whole point. So that's why I wanted to show you how to create date columns when you're reading in files uh, from CSV files, reading in data from CSV files.